I have a couple of announcements, but I'm going to just move on to the word. Amen. Psalms 139, everybody should get a Bible, mobile device or something. Walk in the aisle so I can see you. Everybody got a Bible? All right, Psalms 139, let's just eat for a minute. Is that all right? Can we eat for a moment? All right. The handout, don't worry about the handout. we get to that next week. Um, amen. Psalms 139. We there? Amen. Say amen, I've got it. The Bible says in verse number one, you have searched me, come, Lord, and you what? And you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar simply telling us that God already knows about you and me. And the funny thing about it is he already knows what you're thinking. <laughs> Anybody ever been in church and had some crazy thoughts? God already knew. Amen. You ever been with somebody, around somebody and didn't open up your mouth but your mind was racing real fast? And you, somebody asks you what you think, and you said, I'm just not going to say nothing. They might not know, but how many know God knows everything? Real quick, look at somebody and just say, look, look, KYMS, keep your mouth shut. Sometimes we don't need to talk with our mouth. Tell your neighbor, keep your mind shut. Sometimes we talk with our mind too much, amen, and watch, listen to me carefully, I found out that sometimes you can talk with your mind so long you'll get a headache. Because you're compounding thoughts that you can't release because you're afraid it might hurt or offend somebody. Can you say amen? amen. When really you shouldn't be thinking that way anyway. The Bible says in Philippians, it says, let this mind be in you that's also what? In Christ Jesus. So whatever we think, it should be heavenly. But the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse number 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the what? Renewing of your what? Of your, how do you get your mind renewed? You've got to get in the word. So if you don't get in the word, guess what? You're going to still carry that old mind and try to carry the new mind at the same time. Can you say amen? amen. Tell your neighbor your conversation should be different. But your conversation is only different when it comes from what's in your mind. Your mind is a download mechanism. When your mind downloads something, it comes to your mouth. And when it comes to your mouth, it's coming out of your heart. Can you say amen? amen. Watch this. A little further, he says, he says in verse 2 again, you know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. Verse 3, you discern my going out. And my lying down. Discern means God already knows what you're going to do before you do it. Amen. Many of us have done some things. Listen to me, Carol. We've done some things, and as soon as we did it, we said, mm, I'm sorry, Lord, I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> do I have a witness? Yeah. Ooh, I'm sorry, Lord, I shouldn't have said it. Yeah. Ooh, I'm sorry, Lord, I shouldn't have went there. Can you say amen? He says, verse 3, the B part, you are familiar with what? With all my ways. God is familiar with all your ways before you even get there. Before you even walk into it, he already knows. Why? Because he knows your thoughts. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're going to do. Somebody clap your hands for his grace and his mercy. That is good and Lord. Because if it had not been for God's mercy, where would we be today? Can you say amen? Verse number four, he says, before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. That cuss word he already knew that was coming out of your mouth. That backbiting word, that gossip word, he already knew it was coming out of your mouth. That slandering word, he already knew it was coming out of your mouth. That mouth, that word of praise and glory, that, that word of thanksgiving, he already knew it 
was coming out of your mouth. But here's the problem we have. The Bible says in James chapter 3, verse number 10, out of the same mouth should not proceed blessings and cursings. You can't curse me one day and bless God the next moment. Can you say amen? I see some of y'all smiling. You better go ahead and repent right now. <laughs> You cannot bless God and then curse somebody the next day. We oh, Listen, this is what mistake people make. We always ask God for something. Oh, God, God, bring it, bring it. Oh, God, bring it, bring it, bring it. As soon as God get it, as soon as God get it, we forget about what God done. Then somebody come into our midst we really don't like, and we curse them out without saying a word. It's a mouthful right there. Because sometimes our thoughts, First Lady, our thoughts are dying. Our thoughts stop us from moving into God's presence. I said it in the prayer. God's presence, there was fullness of what? Joy. How many want the joy of the Lord that is my strength? In order for you to get that, you got to understand that God knows everything about you. Everything. Say everything. Everything. He says in verse 5, you hear me in behind and before, which means God is behind you and God is in front of you. You can't get away from God. No matter how hard you try, the Bible says in the book of Peter, he says, if you come to God and forget what God has done, you're like a dog going back to his vomit. And many people, God has been, has God been good to us. If you had it, he'd been real good to you. Amen. But let's just be real. Sometimes I forget about God and go back to my vomit because that's what I'm familiar with. Can you say amen? amen. It's called character trait. Say character trait. Yeah. David is talking about character right here. And the character, glory be to God. The character is who you are in front of people. The integrity is who you are away from people. And sometimes we will turn our character on because I'm around people. But as soon as I leave people, my integrity is gone because I'm acting like a nut. Do I got a witness in here? Yeah. Tell somebody, saved, always saved. Yeah. Say once saved, always saved. Yeah. yeah, but you got to stay saved. Say stay saved. Stay saved. Say stay saved. Stay you got to stay saved. How do you stay saved? By staying in God's word every day. By having a healthy prayer life. By having a healthy, healthy servant life. By having a healthy, healthy uh, 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 outreach life. You got to stay in God's presence every single moment of your life. If not, tell your neighbor you're going back to the vomit. Some of y'all didn't say that right. <laughs> Watch what he says in verse 5. You hit me in behind him before, and you laid your hand upon me. Upon me. Say, his hand is upon you. Watch this. Go to Psalms 34. Bookmark Psalms 139. We're going back. Go to Psalms 34. Watch what the Bible says to us. Y'all with me this morning? I'm just teaching a little bit. Is that all right? Tina read that song and it just glorified in my spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 34. Are you there? Amen. Say amen if you haven't. Amen. Watch these few verses. Let's start in verse number six. The Bible says, this poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. Aren't you glad God saved you out of all your troubles? In verse seven, he says, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who what? Who fear him. Does that mean that God's going to remove the angel? No, he's not going to remove the angel. But guess what? The angel is there when you get in trouble. But in order for the angel to help you immediately, you've got to stay and be in God's presence. Can you say amen? Look at your name and just say, stop using God. Hallelujah. He's, he's not no toy you can just use him when you feel like use him. Deal with him when you feel like deal with him. No, you need God every single moment of your life. Watch what he says in verse number eight. One of my favorite scriptures. He said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Is there anybody beside me that know that the Lord tastes good like fried chicken? Fried chicken is my favorite meat. God tastes good like fried. Somebody give God a praise for that food. He tastes real good to you. You know, I got a real person in here. Come on, somebody. Sweet potato pie. Come on, somebody. Help y'all not praising him right. Y'all must don't like no food, amen. God tastes good to me like fried 
like chicken every day. Because if my wife don't cook, I know I can go get some chicken. <laughs> Amen. Because chicken tastes good to me. Give me some chicken and some honey, I'm good. She'll tell you, don't bother me, I'm good. And I'll eat it again and again and again. Oh, I love leftover chicken. Any leftover chicken? Leftover? I love it so good, I ain't got to heat it up. I just got to buy it. <laughs> Can you say amen? But that's how good it is. God is a course meal. God is the number one meal. God is a five course meal. And God is a leftover. Somebody give God a leftover prayer. So let's move on. He says in verse number six, he says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me, for me, too lofty for me to attain. And I remember I spoke the series about knowledge. Guess what, saints? You'll never get enough of God's knowledge. The knowledge is in his word. How many, besides me, every time you read the word, you find out something new. Hallelujah. That's why he says his mercies is new every morning. In the morning is his word. When you open up this Bible, you'll find, how many found something new about yourself? Just reading the word of God. Something new about, about you, what you were dealing with. Something new about what you were up against. And the word became a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path to guide you into the truth that what? That the truth can set you free. Anybody want to be free this morning? I tell you, you want to be real free? Get into God's word and don't move until God give you a word for whatever it is you're up against or whatever it is you're going through. Can you say amen? He said, it's too lofty for me to attain. Verse number seven, key verse, where can I go from your spirit? Ask your neighbor. You can run, but your show can't hide. He says, where can I flee? From your presence. If you look in your Bible, that's two questions. He's saying, where can I go from your spirit? And where can I go from your presence? Anybody beside me ever show up somewhere and God use somebody to speak the word that you needed for that day? Amen. Come on, somebody, yeah. help me. Yeah. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Anybody ever went home and said, you know what, brother, you know what, sister? I went to the mall and I met somebody that told me the same thing that what I was going through because they was going through the same thing. God will always bring you a witness and let you know that if he can do it for them, he can do it for you. Do I got a witness in here? Because he's everywhere. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He is everything at the same place at the same time. And he wants to give his angels charge over you to help you and strengthen you in this walk with him. But you got to stay in his presence. Yes. You can't treat God like a G.I. Joe or a Barbie. Play with him for a little while, then set him down. Well, I'm way back right there. I ain't playing with toys in the round, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then, you, you can't treat God like a toy. You can't play with God and fiddle with him. Because he will come upon you. Let's look, let's look further. He says, he says in verse number eight, if I go up to, to the heavens, you are, you are there. If I make my bed, somebody will say, in hell, you are there. What are you talking about, sister? What are you talking about, sister uh, Rachel? He's talking about some of us are making our bed in hell while we're living on earth. Can you say amen? amen? I'll say I need a new Bible, but I can't get rid of this. He said, if you make your bed in hell, I'm still right there. Yes. Now, I don't know about you. That's a loving yes. God right there. Because yes. yes. the truth be told, some of us, as good as we look right now, and those that are not here, as good as they may look, some of us come to church and get in our car and ride, drive right back to hell. And we axing and hoping that God will help me through this hell I'm living through here in this earth realm. Yeah. But here's the, here's, here's the antidote. When God sets you up to live in a hell because of the person or the people or the thing or the situation that you're dealing with, God wants a response from you. Do I have a witness right now? That's why he says in Psalms 150 verse 6, let everything that what? Everything. Do what? Praise the Lord. So whatever you're doing, whatever you're up against, the best way out of it is to give God the praise. And while you're praising God, you stop and say, God, I thank you for what I'm going through. I thank you for what I'm dealing with. I thank you for what I'm up against. I thank you for what I'm facing. I thank you.
thank you, Lord, that what's trying to come my way, I give you the praise, I give you the glory, I give you the honor and advance for what you're going to do with my life. Because the Bible says if you want to reign with Christ, listen to me carefully, you got to learn how to suffer with him. And many of us, many of us, sister, many of us, sister, share, we don't know how to suffer. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. First Peter chapter 5. Go there in your Bibles. First Peter chapter 5. I got about 10 minutes, so y'all flowing, y'all all right? First Peter chapter 5. Hallelujah. This is a little Bible study this morning. Is it all right? First Peter chapter 5. Bookmark Psalms 139. We're going back there. First Peter chapter 5. Watch what he tells us. Watch what he tells us. Watch what he tells us. Hallelujah. Oh, I think we need to be reminded. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for prompting this in my spirit. I think we need to be reminded of the scriptures, hallelujah, that we haven't seen in a while. Say amen if you have 1 Peter chapter 5. Amen. Say amen louder. Amen. A little louder. Amen. Okay, good. We got it. Look, I want to read for us real quick. Watch what the Bible says to us in verse number 8. The Bible says, be alert and what? Sober minded. Sober minded means you need to clean your filthy mind. Your enemy, here it is, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone. Say, looking for someone. Point your index finger at your name and say, he's looking for you. Are y'all looking at me? No, point to your name and say, he's looking for you. Uh, yeah, the enemy is looking for you to do what? Hallelujah. To, to devour you, to kill you, to take you out of here. But remember Psalms 139, if I make my bed in heaven, he is there. If I make my bed in hell, he's there. So whatever hell you might be up against right now, you need to reassure yourself that God is right there. He's a present help in a time of trouble. He will help me do whatever I'm up against and whatever I'm dealing with. He says in verse number nine, the Bible says, resist him, comma, resist him. That simply means resist him. I don't care who's talking to you. I don't care what they're saying. I don't care what's going on in your life. You need to just learn how to resist the devil. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. They say a closed mind, closed mouth never get fed. I like this one. A closed mouth is better in living in better peace if you just close your mouth. Amen. Amen. So we always want to put a word on it, but sometimes we put the word, the wrong word on it. Can you say amen? amen? He says, resist him, standing firm in the what? In the faith. Now you know what faith is. Faith is the substance of the thing hoped for, the evidence of the thing not seen. So sometimes when you're standing firm in faith, you don't see what God is doing. But somebody tell your neighbor, he's behind the scenes and working it out. Oh, you're the hat. Oh, I need a praiser right there. He is behind us. Let me help y'all. I heard some good testimonies about these kids today. And how many know it had to be God working behind the scenes to turn my child around? Oh, y'all not praise him right. I need a real parent that will give God the praise. But he's turning my child around. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. He's moving on me right now. I got to go somewhere. He'll go to uh, 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 Proverbs chapter 20. I'm sorry, I got to go there. Say, Holy Ghost is moving on me. Proverbs chapter number 20. I got to tell y'all about your kids because I think some of us forgot. Let's look and see what the Bible says about our kids. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs chapter number 20. Flow with me in the spirit. That's right. We're going back to Peter. Then we're going back. I got about eight minutes. I ain't going to be long, hallelujah. I'm going to get through Psalms 139, even though I have to read it. But I want you to see something in Proverbs chapter number 20. And parents, highlight this so you'll understand that the next time your child acts stupid or crazy or ignorant, you can apply the scripture to their life. Proverbs chapter 20. I want y'all to see this. Say amen if you have it. Amen. Shout a little louder. Amen. The Bible says in verse number 11, even a child... Or small children are known by their actions. So is their conduct really pure and upright? Some of your Bibles say it a little bit different. But you need to take that scripture and highlight it and understand that sometimes your child will act like a nut. <laughs> Do I got a witness in here? Now listen to me carefully. If they don't know how to pray, you pray with them and for them. Watch this, because some of our children, some of our children do not know how to resist the devil. Do I have a witness in here? 
I, I need to go way back. Children, young, I see y'all young people in there. Watch this. Every parent that remember when you were 17, no, when you was 12 to 17 and you was very mischievous, I want you to stand up and give God a hand of praise. Thank you. There's one witness. There's one Come on. Let, let the kids know that they There's some real people in here. I know they're in Yeah, there's some real people in here. Hallelujah. That remember when I was crazy just like my child is today. Yeah. 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 Mm. Grandchild, I don't care. Great grandchild. We all have our ignorant season. Do I got a witness in here? We all have our stupid moments. Do I got a witness in here? The first thing we want to do, I ain't going to the spirit of ride the scripture, but you know, the day to day side is if you whoop your child, you go into jail. Y'all know how I feel about that. Go, go ahead and lock me up. Amen, somebody. <laughs> I know my mama told me you ain't paying no bills, hallelujah. You ain't buying no food, amen. Hallelujah. And you ain't paying the rent. So I think you need to do what I say do. Can you say amen? amen. See, we can be the God to our child in the earth realm if we live right. Amen. If we don't live right, you can't be God to your children. That's right. Can you say amen? amen? All right, let's go back First Peter real quick if you bookmark it. 1 Peter chapter number 5. I hope you write these scriptures down. They're good for your soul later on. He says in verse number 9, resist him, a standing firm in the faith. Because what? You know that the family, oh, here it is, the family of who? Believe. Believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. Yes. You are not exempt, and there's somebody, listen to me, going through the same stuff you yeah. going through. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Come on now. But it's not what you go through. It's how you go through it. Yes, and most of the time we forget that if I make my bed in heaven, he is there. And if I make my bed in hell, he is there. Because some of the hell that we in right now, we chose it for ourselves. Because of our, our mind is messed up. Has not yet been transformed and renewed. Can you say amen? amen. Verse number 10, watch this. And the God of all grace. Here it is right here. Watch this, Cecily. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, here it is, after you have suffered a little while. Now here's the key, Diane. That scripture don't say how long a little while is. But will somebody give God the praise for the little while that I'm in right now? I'm still going through. I'm still up against. I'm still dealing with. I don't know when it's going to last. That his presence is right there. Oh, do you have a witness in here? Give your neighbor a high five and say, he's talking to me right now. Yes, he is. He's talking right to me. God going to have you to suffer. And you got to learn how to suffer. According to Psalms 139. Let's go back there real quick. Hallelujah. Oh, no. No, stay right there. I'm sorry. Let me, let me finish it. He said, a little while will himself restore you. Say restore you. And make you strong. God's word is amen. His word is amen. His, his promises are yes and amen. And God says, listen, after you suffer, Diane, after you suffer, Shonda, after you suffer, Mother Hodges, I'm going to restore you and make you strong. But we got to know how to suffer. I'm suffering in ministry, but guess what? I'm stronger than I was five years ago. Do I got a witness in here? I suffered in my relationship with my wife. I suffered, but guess what? I'm a lot better than I was ten years ago. Do I got a witness in here? Why, Pastor? How? Because I stayed in God's presence even when I was living in hell myself. Y'all better hear what I just said. Y'all looking at me like y'all got it all together. But tell your neighbor, he talking to me again. I remember being in hell and God was still speaking to me. Do I got a witness in here? Some of them was in hell last week and God was still speaking to you. Watch what he said. Let's go back to Psalm 139. I'm almost done. Psalm 139. Are y'all with me? Bear with me for a moment. I mean, flow with me. Flow with me. Psalms 139. Let's go back there. Let's finish off Psalms 139. Say amen if you have. Amen. Good, y'all got a bookmark. Y'all good. Good class. Good class. He says in verse, he says in verse number nine. If, if I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, verse 10, even where your hand will guide, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. 
I don't have enough time. Well, let's go to the favorite book in the whole Bible, Psalms 23. I want y'all to see something. That's my song too, sweet. That should be everybody's song. Let me put y'all on blast. If you're a believer, you should know Psalm 23 by heart. If you don't, you got work to do. Can you say amen? amen. You got work to do. Hallelujah. Psalm 23. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all yeah, yeah. sure you're ready? Yeah. All right. At the count of three. One, two, three. Recite it. I didn't say read it. I didn't say read it. I wanted you to recite it verbatim. Some of y'all looking at your Bibles. That's okay. I want you to go to verse three. Y'all mess up. Y'all mess it up. Thank you, first lady. I want you to go to verse number three. Watch what it says. Watch what it says. He says in verse two, when you make me lie down in green pastures, and you watch this, when you lay down, God wants to speak to you. That's what that means. And sometimes we're in such a hurry in our life, we ain't got time to lay down. Then he says, I want to lead you beside the still water. Here it is, the still waters. Here it is, Sister Judy. Here it is, Sister Diane. He says, I want you to be able to see yourself by the brook in the water. In other words, is anybody beside me ever skipped a rock when you was a kid? When you skip a rock, you get a ruffle of the waves. And sometimes our life is moving so fast. It's like a rock skipping on the water. And the waves are moving and God wants you to lay down in the green pasture. So he can then lead you beside the still water. So when the water is still, you can see a reflection of who you really are. Because the water represents two things, Holy Spirit and his word. And when you can see yourself in his word by the power of the Holy Spirit, then you and I will be able to do verse number three, yes. which says what, saints? He refreshes my, anybody beside me ever get malnutrition, so empty, so, so dehydrated that you need the word of God to just take you another week. Or do I got a witness right here, another day, another minute, another hour. God sometimes wants you to take a break. In other words, time out. Somebody say time out. Lay down in the green pasture. Sit beside the still water. So God can do what? Refresh your soul. Because here it is, saying, if you don't refresh your soul, your spirit is going to die. We have we flesh and blood. Fit yourself, say, you're yeah, flesh. But you got a soul and you have a spirit. And how the spirit comes alive is how well you feed your soul. And if you don't feed your soul nothing but a bunch of junk, guess what? That's all you're going to get. But if he will feed your soul the word of God, he will take you through the valley of the shadow of death. Why? Because his rod and his staff will do what? It will comfort you. And then he'll do what? He'll anoint your head with oil. And then he'll do what? He'll prepare a table for you. It, that's why we can't deal with our enemies because we have not refreshed ourselves. Yes, yes. And then when First Peter comes back up and the devil comes, we can't fight him, First Lady, because I haven't refreshed myself. Listen to me. Do your neighbor stop fighting battle after battle. You gotta pick your battles and stop trying to fight everybody else's battle. You I got I got enough battles all by myself. Why I trying to fight your battles and your battles? All oh, some of y'all trying to take on everybody's battle and you can't even win your own victory in your own battle. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Tell your neighbor, stop fighting. Stop stand fighting. to your feet in the presence of the Lord. Good. Give the Lord a hand praise while you're standing there. Come on, stand to your feet and give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want you to take a pen and a piece of paper out. I want you to write something down. Please write this down. Hallelujah. As we get ready to be dismissed.
I want you to write this down. These, these letters I want you to write down. I want you to write GG, ATG, GG, ATG, GG, ATG. I gave you that because I want you to do this the next time somebody try to bring you some stuff, the next time somebody try to get you to fight their battle, the next time you're up against something and you can't deal with it, the next time there's something that's come up against you and you don't know how to figure it out, you can't get through with it, the next time somebody wanna say you're this, that, and the other, I want you to look at them and say, give God all the glory. Amen. That's for you today. G-G-A-T-G, -G. give God. Next time they slam you in your face, you just look and say, give God all the glory. Amen, Amen somebody. Yeah. Next time you get that crazy email or that crazy text, give God all the glory. Amen. That will shut the mouth of the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> glory yeah. be to God. Yeah. That will shut your husband and your wife up. Yeah. That will shut your family up. Yeah. Give God all the glory. Because yeah. we all are living Psalms 139, whether you like it or not. Every head yeah. bow. Father, we bless you.